right, next we have some unfinished business. <clears throat> First one is um, on our ACI contract. I need a motion on this, please. I move that the board approve the contract between the district and ACI Boland Inc. for architectural services. Thank you. And a second? Second. Any questions on this? Yeah, I was, as I was reading, I think I read something to the fact about uh, prior to the bond that the district would pay for any expenditures for ACI, is that correct? Yeah. So do we know how much those expenditures will be and what they are? Uh, I don't know exactly how much they are. They'd be very little out of the fact that we've asked them to walk through our buildings. We've already accepted them as our, our architect mm -hmm. back a few meetings ago, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't have an up-to-date. Uh, but as far as on the, the issues that they're working on for this bond issue, coming up with the numbers you've seen tonight, uh, those will all be paid out of bond proceeds. And you can see in those in the charts we'll have coming up will be uh, the soft cost, that's the actual architectural fees for the bond issue itself. So along, that, along with other fees as well, there's engineering fees. Yeah, engineering is inside of that, not well. just the architects, but the engineers. But that's what the district will pay for, Correct. excluding the bond. Right. <clears throat> and with, though you say here that it is uh, in our budget, but we don't know how much money that is, right? Well, we know that uh, it's going to be for the bond project, it's going to be $2 million, something like that, 10% soft costs on the total cost of the bond uh, expenditures. Leading up to that, though, uh, I've budgeted about $50,000 for that. I don't anticipate it being that much leading up to that. They have not invoiced us the first time yet. Part of the work they understand they're, they are doing uh, at the risk of the bond issue not passing, uh, but uh, some of the things that we're asking them to do to prepare us for that, we will pay, and that's this contract formalizes. We, the the board selected them as when we went through the statutory requirement of requesting for proposal. This is just the formalized uh, contract then uh, that we entered into. There's typically. Uh, ACI will tell you that there's things in the AIA document that, that I don't think are in the best interest of districts. We don't allow them to, uh, to put a profit on reimbursables. Uh, we don't go into, uh, into uh, mediation, uh, into binding mediation. We'll do mediation. You'll notice that's, that's some of the changes in the verbiage of the contract attached, that uh, it's non-binding uh, mediation so that uh, typically the courts are pretty friendly to school districts. We're happy if there arises a dispute to try and work it out through mediation, but we don't want to be held to, to what a single mediator would, would suggest is the solution. We want to keep our options open. Those are a couple of the big rocks that we've moved around. Uh, what the cost will be for us leading into the bond versus the actual, the, the, the larger part, really it's I hesitate to say it's not very much. You know, when you have a $100 million budget, there's hardly anything that's not very much anymore. Uh, but I would anticipate that being less than $50,000 uh, to do the work prior to the bond issue. So the cost is that uh, we see for each school is prepared by ICI? Yes. And, and we'll recoup. What we pay up front is kind of our risk. Uh, we'll recoup that and, and use the bond proceeds when the bond passes, but we will front that. Obviously, they have expenses. There'll be some things that we'll want to do to get information out uh, to our public about the bond issue that, uh, that's going to require us to, to have some investment of time and resources to prepare for the actual election. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Please vote on this. Okay, the 
next item is the April 8, 2014 bond issue. We're going to have this in three parts tonight. <clears throat> We're going to have ACI go first and walk you through the um, project list. Um, it's very, it's probably 99% similar to what we started with in a pretty simple PowerPoint a few months ago. But now it's more uh, detailed with numbers. A few things we, we've taken out and adjusted, but for the most part it's the same. But we want them to start by walking through that with you so you can have an understanding. And this is the first time you're going to be training on it. You're going to continually be training on it. Uh, the second part, uh, Ms. Alley and uh, Ms. Nixon will present uh, the survey results we took uh, during the parent-teacher conference in November, along with introducing you to um, the people that we twisted their arms to become the bottom co-chairs. Uh, here tonight, at least one of them are there in the audience. And then finally, uh, Mr. Bartow with George K. Baum. Uh, Greg could not be here tonight, so uh, Mr. Bartow will be here to explain the ballot language and kind of, the, and Brian and I and all three of us were talking about the financing piece at the end prior to us asking you to officially put it on the ballot. And so be prior to all those things, I need a motion so that we can get this started. So could I have a motion for this? Just so we can make you guys official. Okay. Oh Madam President, I move that the board adopt a resolution calling a special election on the question of issuance of general obligation bonds of Consolidated School District Number Two, Raytown of Jackson County, Missouri. Thank you. And a second. Second. Thank you. All right. Now we are ready. Good evening, Michael Couch with ACI Gold and Architects. Great to be here this evening. We do have several things we want to go through with you this evening. Um, before I get started and talk about some of these numbers, I do want to let you know that, that we've had numerous meetings with administration. Uh, we started out with Dr. Hux meeting with facility group, going through the assessment that was done in 2009. That was kind of our starting point. So we went back through that. From that, then, we went out to every school the design team did. And that included myself, uh, Rod Finkel's here with Malone Finkel at Carton Collins, our engineering consultant. Went through those buildings and started putting together these numbers that you're seeing here this evening. The numbers that you're seeing, uh, we have broken those down into four years of projects, as you can see, 2014 through 2017. If you remember back when we were here and we were actually interviewing for this project, we talked about what could be done in 2014, uh, right after the bond issue passed. And we indicated that many of the projects that you had on your list were going to take some time to engineer, bid, and then get the products available uh, to actually proceed with those projects. That included a lot of the plumbing and the electrical upgrades that you're talking about. I'm going to stop yes. for just one second. Board members, this is the last document that's okay. attached. Yeah. Thank We've you. got a whole list of things. I understand. We can't see what you guys are looking at. It's too small. So I understand. Uh, the very last document. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. Keep going. Yes. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, what we have done is, is that we have estimated the cost for these projects based on today's dollars. And then we have escalated those into these four years. But as I indicated, some of the projects or most of the larger projects, due to the time frame that we want to have those projects done during the summer, because we've got to shut down schools to replace plumbing, to replace electrical service. That, all that material that needs to be here for the contractors takes time to get that here. So with an April bond issue, uh, trying to get something accomplished in 2014 during the summer is very difficult. But what we have done is we looked at some of these projects such as painting, exterior painting, interior painting, and uh, technology, and maybe even some of the exterior lighting. And we said, yes, those are things that can happen that first summer and so that we can make some impact right after the bond issue passes. And so those were moved into 2014. As you can see, a bulk of the projects are in 2015. As we started talking with administration, we indicated to them each year that we push these things out farther, there's going to be additional cost due to inflation and construction costs going up. And so it's in your best interest to get the most for your money is to move those up as soon as we can get them done. And so that's why you see most of the cost in 2015. 
we do have some things in 2016 and 17. Talking with Dr. Hux, he told me I've got to have one high school, two middle schools, and at least five elementaries available every summer for summer school. And so we started going through the projects, prioritizing how we could ship things to make sure that that would happen. And so that's why things do get moved out to those subsequent years. This first sheet that you see here, and you should have on your uh, computer there, shows uh, categories of projects, and I think these came from the 2009 or assessment that you had seen before. So that's why we've created this, where you've got restroom upgrades, roof replacements, exterior painting, interior painting, and so forth. Uh, over to the right, then, you can see a total for each one of those. You will notice that there are two line items, domestic water insulation and sanitary sewer piping, which have zeros. Meeting with uh, facilities, uh, they had decided that we wanted to pull those out of the project. So I'm going to let Rod make a couple comments about that. Yeah, we, they had decided to pull those out because it was not as serious of uh, an issue in most of their buildings. Uh, and pretty much the same thing with the sanitary sewer piping. But while sanitary sewer piping in the buildings is it's all pretty old, it's all also underneath the concrete throughout the whole building. So to replace that at this time would mean that we'd have to replace all the concrete as we cut it out. So it became real expensive and it, would, it made more sense to just replace the sections as they come up rather than going through the whole thing. And it made, it made very good sense and that's typically what we would do anyway. But from the initial assessment, there were things that were put in that were taken out as far as different schools uh, needing additional items such as the water replacement lines and the electrical upgrades that we had uh, originally seen from the 2009 assessment. We feel like we've got a very good basis now for the projects uh, that will be included in this uh, bond issue. Uh, once we went through this, as I indicated, uh, we have put uh, soft cost in here of 10%, that includes GSR fees, but it includes printing, uh, any other uh, testing that needs to be done during the construction periods, uh, advertising for uh, the projects to bid, printing of those documents, all of that's in that 10%. So there's a lot of things that kind of are lumped in there. And then we do have a contingency also included in these projects. But we do come up a little over $25 million, which is more than what was in what you had seen previously. Any questions on that chart? I'm, I'm curious, you made a statement in reference to uh, postponing, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and also as far as the uh, piping and everything that you would have to just, uh, remove concrete and all of that. Mm -hmm. So are you saying then as these things become uh, needed that you guys would do this, I'll have it done? Or, I mean, uh, I'm trying to follow here. That is something, yes, that we could be involved in, but it would not be something that would be uh, set up to do as a part of this bond issue. It would be on an ad need basis. So this all so right. That would not, yes. we pulled it out of our financing with the bond itself. Right. We'll deal with those issues as they arise and need to be through our normal budgeting process. We have uh, money that we expend on a yearly basis out of our normal budget to do some building maintenance and repair. So what we're doing is, is pulling that out and then it will be my responsibility and Dr. Hudson's responsibility to anticipate those as they come and build it into our regular budget as needed. Okay. Bear with me, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to understand now, if we have bad pipes now, are we going to deal with that now? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I think what, what happened was there, at the original survey, there was an anticipation of deterioration and condition. A much more thorough examination, and it several years later happened, and we've determined that the reality is while some of this piping is not in a shape it is not to the point where it rises to to the level that it needs replacement now it would be like the roof on your house should last 20 years you get that last four or five years and you kind of 
you kind of go with it to get as much life expectancy out of it as you can before it starts leaking. And then our job is to get to that to get as much life expectancy out of it to maximize uh, its value, its life value, uh, without going too long with it. So we will uh, we'll continue to uh, to watch and to react as needed. Ernie, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to touch on that real quick, we have identified those pipes. Travis has brought a few samples. Some of them are going to be replaced. Do not be afraid. Don't touch them. <laughs> but, uh, do not be afraid of them. These are some of the pipes we've already replaced, and you can tell we have uh, gotten a life expectancy out of those. So this is a critical project, and uh, they are. Uh, if you look inside those pipes, you can see they're highly calcified. Yeah. You know what should be an inch is more like a, what I call a BB size hole in a lot of pipes, so you they'll shear off and bust. And that's at the same time, we don't need to cause panic that this is what all the pipes look like in the district. These pipes have come from Eastwood and Southwood and we spent a million dollars per building this summer to replace the piping and all that's the why they're there that's not why, in the building. That's right. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a perfect example of what Mr. Blankenship was talking about. Yeah. When the need come up we address it. Yeah. But now we're going to get to do it on a much greater level. You guys want to see this? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, these are already replaced. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And no, and basically we want to avoid that happening at the other buildings, and so that's why we're asking to do this project. Look like uh, uh, calcified uh, arteries. Yeah, yeah exactly. other people have seen them thought I had artifacts over here, but I guess they could be in the range. We thought they were somebody's bones. <laughs> bones of the school. Any other questions? Why were you just sitting down there? I have one other chart here that shows the amount of money to be spent at each one of the facilities. And as you can see, your newer facilities have very little, such as Little Blue Elementary. We're basically looking at doing some technology there, uh, which uh, is a very small amount compared to your other facilities, which have major <coughs> renovations going on. I'd like to spend a few minutes just talking to you a little bit because we do have some projects that do involve some guided entrances into schools so we can create that secure entry into those facilities. We brought you one example. This is just a concept. Let me tell you that. Nothing's been finalized. We've not met with staff to go through this to come up to the final design yet. But we did want to share something with you as far as what would be taking place at several locations. This is Laurel Hills Elementary. Um, as you can see, this is what's there now. Uh, the dashed green line shows you somebody coming into the building. It has to go into the middle of the building to get to the office. Um, whether they make it to the office or cut down one of these hallways, you don't know until uh, somebody asks them a question while they're in the facility. If you want to look at this on your machine, it is the second to the bottom. It's the PPTX file, and it's the third uh, slide in that file. The next slide we have here is a proposed uh, change to that layout where we would take a, a kindergarten room, which is adjacent to the entry, create that reception area, create a secure vestibule, where people would have to be routed into the office to see why they're there before they're allowed to go into the building if they actually need to go into the building. What this does then is we're just kind of flipping spaces. We're creating a new classroom, taking an existing classroom. Uh, the one thing though that I will caution you on is that that new classroom area is not the same size as the kindergarten being redone. It looks smaller. It is smaller. Uh, there are 
adjustments that have been discussed. Uh, there are apartments in these buildings, as many of you know. Many of those apartments are being used for various things. Uh, we've got teachers' lounges, though, in classroom spaces that we're talking about moving teachers' <coughs> lounge, workrooms into the apartment areas, freeing up classroom space in the buildings. So there are adjustments, and I don't know. Dr. Like Hunter, said, if you got exactly right in line. Yeah. If you got anything else, so. Well, we'll co you know, as he stipulated, this is strictly a concept, and obviously everyone will have input before we do something like that. Right. Also, uh, one of the projects that's part of the bond issue, uh, Raytown South High School Stadium Improvements, we've got two concepts we just wanted to show you here this evening. Uh, taking the 500 seats, which are currently now uh, next to the school there, on the west side of the track, moving those over to the east side, putting in 2,000 new seats, new press box, creating a plaza and entryway with uh, a tickets booth in there, and then a concession and toilet facility. And I will tell you probably the majority of that building is toilets. Uh, we need 33 women's toilets, so it takes a lot of space uh, to get all of that in there. And that's based on current uh, building codes uh, for the number of facilities that we need in the area. The one thing we looked at was having that facility available not only for the football stadium, but also for the baseball field. So it could be a double use uh, for both of those fields. This particular one shows the restroom and concession stand running north and south, creating a, a large plaza out in front of it. Uh, just kind of an aerial view of how that might look when it was done. Another concept runs it the opposite direction, which reduces some of that plaza space, but here again, you're trying to combine people in there so that you can monitor what's going on during these games and activities. And so we reduce that a little bit. This would reduce some of the cost for all the concrete that would be going into that plaza area. Again, the same amount of bleachers proposed, and this is how that might look. Any questions or comments? As I said, these are just concepts. Definitely we want to spend some time going through both of these, not only the uh, guided entries, but the stadium to make sure uh, we're getting it uh, exactly as the district wants it. Questions? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> champion a cause uh, I thought about I thought about a time that we met the first time he and I met and it was um, at a meeting over at South High uh, a soccer meeting and, and I uh, listened to this gentleman that was very passionate about Raytown South High School about kids and about soccer um, and I remember that that meeting and uh, and we met several times after that uh, on different issues and he has had three uh, very successful students go through our school district and I thought maybe we can convince him to do this and we had lunch and we talked about it and uh, he, of course he has to clear everything through candy uh, which is the same I do for <laughs> Kathy but, um, but he was able to do that and I am uh, honored that he is, has agreed to do that along. Richard Davis is not here tonight, he's a dad over at uh, Raytown High School uh, and is treasurer on the PTA Council, but Mr. David Sprick, would you like to stand and say a few words yes, about sir. Raytown Schools? What you, do you, think? you, uh, you took most of my, most of my thunder. I don't, don't have a lot to say. I have a pretty common story, I think, for, for Raytown. Um, 
1994, my wife and I moved into Raytown, and then for the next 18 years, uh, one or more of our three children were in the Raytown School District. Um, we spent a lot of time during those years involved in PTA and uh, sports clubs and, and groups, advisory committees, whatever I could get talked into for the, for the most part. Uh, but most importantly, our children had uh, the opportunity to have a really great education um, in Raytown. Um, it, it started with challenge. They were in the challenge program. They had an opportunity to participate in, in music and sports and debate. And by the time they got to high school, uh, they had an opportunity to take a broad range of, of AP classes. Uh, the Raytown School District, we think, has been really, really good to our family. Uh, it was a choice Candy and I made uh, at the time that we were getting ready to move. We could have moved any place in the, the Kansas City area. We chose Raytown. Uh, it was a really, really good choice. It wasn't too difficult for Dr. Markley to, to talk me into being involved with, with the, the drive to, to help make sure that this bond campaign is successful. Um, I know that we need, as a, as a community, to continue to invest in our schools if we want those schools con to continue to be uh, a good choice. So I'm happy to be involved. And it, it didn't really take that much twisting, did, <laughs> did it? And uh, we will uh, begin to uh, formulate our committee. Uh, the, the building principal have been, have been asked to identify. Uh, you, you met a potential committee member tonight during a certain section. I was just trying to hide back there, but I'm looking right at her. Uh, potential committee member uh, for our bond issue. And we'll bring those folks together after the first of the year and talk about our timeline, specific duties, things like that. Uh, and again, myself and and anyone on my administrative team, we, we have to serve kind of as liaisons, as information uh, folks, so we can stay within the realms of the statutes. Uh, while the folks that we can produce, I'm not going to tell them to go out and vote yes, but Dave can, and, and Kenya could as well, or anybody out in the crowd that's, that's not necessarily working for the district, so. But anyway, that being said, uh, Danielle, you wanna give us some update? The next part of what you have includes our results from parent teacher conference surveys, and following that, there's some sample visuals that we want to have in the front of every, every school room. From, from the survey, what you're going to see is that all of our issues broken down have a 85% or higher approval rating, except for our last two items on there. And so, so those issues have a hard copy of the results. Oh, yes, that's what I handed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the, the, those, those two items would be the electronic sign awards and the upgrades to the South High Stadium. What we're going to use this survey for is an information piece on how we, how we educate and, and who we need to talk to and, and how to move from there. What this tells us is you know, how we shape our informational campaign and, and how we present the information and the information that we have to gather in order to, to move forward, if we, if we choose to move forward. Um, the, do you guys have any questions about the survey? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What kind of information did the parents have when, uh, when they took the survey? It was just a blanket survey. It was the uh, part for the bond was written as a likelihood scale. So you choose if you strongly support, support, oppose, or strongly oppose. There were just these descriptions that you see here at the bar graph to the bottom. bottom. Restroom renovation upgrades, line of sight entries for elementary. That's the information that they had when taking the survey. And most of the survey results came back from our elementary schools because that's where we had the higher attendance rate for so they got the survey when they came to the conference, mm -hmm. and then they sent it back to school. They could either take it at the site online, mm -hmm. or some did fill out paper co copies. They turned it in that night, and some did mail them back in the night. And then we continue to allow them to do it online after the conference. Oh. We also had a QR code that they could scan so that they could take it on their personal device if they didn't want to take it while they're waiting at conferences. 
and we will be doing another round of surveying for our retail patrons. We have a survey monkey link that we're to the point of testing and a QR code, and we want to send it out on our web and send it out through media to give them a chance to see the questions and see the issue and get their feedback as well. And we'll also, it'll include maybe a little bit more demographic information a little bit deeper to see where we need to target our campaign uh, approach uh, with our community. You're going to be approving the bond issue tonight. I mean, there's, there's no arguing that all these items, except maybe the last two or maybe the last one, they've got to be done. Uh, that's why you, you saw such a high percentage uh, of approvals. But um, we still want to know what sections of our community, how they're answering the questions, et cetera. And we'll use that, the committee will use that as we prepare to meet with groups and educate groups on uh, how that money is going to be spent. And the demographic information that we hope to get back from the patron survey is a really important piece that we did miss out here. And it's if they're a registered voter, because that helps us with information on um, who's answering the survey. We're going to ask them if they have a child in school or if they're a patron. And what side do they feel that their attendance area feeds into? So we're going to get a little bit more from them for the, for the second half of the survey. Uh, and then those next, those are just examples. Uh, they're kind of small and they're kind of hard to read. Uh, printed, but those are examples of big 26 by 24 by 36 posters that we want to have in each school. We want to use that visual to show that all of our buildings are, are getting a piece of this pie and, and use it for to educate our principals and of the things that will be happy with them. We hope to accompany these visual, visuals with actual examples of the piping and the restrooms and what the line of sight entries will be like in their building. So that they they see what they're getting, and so that they can communicate that to their parents and patrons as well. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Good information. Thank you. Mr. Barto. Dr. Markley, Madam President, members of the board. What you have is, uh, uh, what you've seen so far is a great deal of work, a great deal of work by your staff, a great deal of work by your architects, um, that's really looked at your facilities in a, in a very, very uh, thorough manner. And trying to figure out, you know, what we need to do to bring these buildings up to grade, to, to bring them up to specifications that you're, you're, uh, you're, you're ready to deal with. The great thing about it is, is that uh, we can do $22 million this particular time with a no tax levy issue increase. So in other words, we keep the debt service levy remains and it will fund $22 million. Now, how do we get to $25 million? Uh, the way we get there is, is we will sell some of these bonds at a premium. Bonds, when they're sold at par, if they yield, if the bonds are worth 2% in the marketplace and they yield 2%, those are called par. If the coupons are a little bit higher than that, and those are premiums and that money comes back to the district. And so through premiums, through conservation of uh, and, and saving through your operational budget, by taking some of these out of your capital projects budget, uh, we'll be able to fund $25 million, 25 and change million dollars, and interest earnings on the bond issue, uh, we'll be able to earn $25 million in order to fund these projects. And that's how we get to $25 million by asking for $22 million. Because we're going to sell some of the bonds at a premium. We're going to drop <coughs> some money because we're going to be able to invest these things. As Michael said, we're not going to spend all this money in the year 2014. And then also we're going to save some capital money. And, and instead of spending money on roof repairs, we're going to take that money and, and spend it out uh, and address it with the bond issue. Do you agree with that, Brian? Absolutely. Uh, as you guys know, we have a certain amount that we spend every year already in capital on the capital side. This is going to allow us to free some of that money up, not all of it. Some of that frees up and allows us to, to, uh, to have it flow into the general operating side, our salaries, uh, and, and some of the things that are uh, increasingly expensive for us on the operational side. And yet we will continue to earmark a certain amount of funds as well on the fund forward side 
to supplement the bond premium and the bond revenues to get all of these projects that, that you guys have identified at this point that you want us to try and get done. I, I'd like to say that we're going to make a lot of money on interest rates. <laughs> well, if you call 40 or 50 basis points, you know, a lot of money, uh, we would, we're, we're better off pushing projects forward as much as we can in the process. That will save us much more money than what it appears that is going to be happening in the investment world that we can legally invest in uh, down the road. That's a losing proposition for us. Five years ago, that wouldn't have necessarily been the case, but it's where we stand right now. On the other side of that issue, though, is it, it, it favors us when we go out to sell these bonds because municipal bonds are a very attractive investment uh, because of basically the guarantee that they're going to pay uh, and pay at a good rate. So we can anticipate with the Fed keeping the federal interest rate down to basically nothing uh, over the next 12 months, we don't anticipate that changing and getting this passed and selling a, a lump sum of these things in June. Uh, we anticipate a good uh, premium on the sale of those bonds and make up that difference. And also, one thing we didn't, you know, we have a 5% uh, increase in costs in these, uh, in these different projects. Well, we'll see. Okay, and we're trying to be very, we're always, when we budget, whenever you create a budget, you set it high on your expenditures and low on your revenue, so you come into the middle at the end. And that's what you do in a building project. So when we go out to bid, for a perfect example, on several different uh, projects, when I was uh, the superintendent of Logan Rogersville School District, and we had to run a three mile sewer line from a new uh, 200,000 square foot high school, three miles back into the town of Rogersville, um, we didn't have, you know, we were really worried about what the cost was. We had nine bidders and saved seven hundred thousand dollars on what we budgeted. So it can, it can happen. Um, we'll see how hungry the the market is for people wanting to make bids. So, but it is a great time to enter into the uh, the marketplace. Bond rates are currently very, very low, very attractive, and uh, for the issuer. And so uh, we're very, very excited about the opportunity. Again, so uh, what I think you have before you is a resolution that would actually place the issue on the ballot. Uh, the resolution calls it that you declare your intent to issue $22 million. Uh, the question, shall the consolidated school district number R2, Great Town of Jackson County, Missouri, borrow money in the amount of $22 million for the purpose of constructing, renovating, improving, furnishing and equipping school facilities of the district, including safety and security enhancements, roof replacements, lighting improvements, restrooms, plumbing, electrical and technology upgrades, and renovation expansion of the existing Raytown South High School athletic facility issue bonds for the payment thereof. Second paragraph, very, very important to the sale of this, and that is, if this proposition is approved, it is estimated that the, the debt service levy of the school district will not increase from its existing levy of $1.17 per $100 assessed valuation of real and personal property. Uh, and then the notice and the secretary of the board is uh, authorized to file this, put it on the ballot by Tuesday, January 28th, and uh, selects a firm of George K. Baum and Company as, as your underwriter and Brian Cave, who presented, who drafted all this legal ease to put the issue on the ballot as your bond counsel. Questions, Madam President? Uh, I, I have a question, concern. Uh, I'm looking at this parent-teacher conference survey, and it clearly 53% says no to the state upgrade. How how are we going to convince our constituents or uh, the public that this is a necessary item to be a part of this bond issue? Can I help her speak to that? <laughs> is that okay? That's fine. Okay with you? Go ahead. Um, we we feel like the preponderance of the surveys came from elementary families and so what we think is that they're not acquainted enough with the district facilities at that level to understand the need to separate those two groups out we have usage problems with overlap and, and it influences things like band competition which can't start on a friday night because even though it's raytown stadium south high is playing there and vice versa so the information that we're taking from that is that that's that's an educational piece on our part okay the other thing is that because this was a non-scientific survey, and that there's the, not a, you know, there's a there's a great 
uh, great number of factors that could influence. You know, maybe my, I was in the middle of taking the survey and my daughter's conference got called, so I stopped and then went back to it and created it. The other thing is there's no visuals or descriptions to go with it at this point. All that they saw when they were a survey taker was, you know, do you think that they're, would you like to see a stadium in South High? So for us, a 57, 43, any other kind of split is just about deciding how much information they had when they, when they really had it. I mean, when they, when they really looked at it. Um, what we think is that when we survey our general patrons, which will be made up of more folks who may or may not have students in the school district, that we'll have an idea about how the general public feels about that. Um, and whether uh, there'll be a desire on the part of the folks who are on the south side of the district to have a stadium finally, whether there'll be a desire on the part of the Raytown High School folks to say farewell to the south high folks who've been inhabiting their space for many years, and we'll have a little bit more information. That survey sample size is just a little short of 900, uh, is it short of 800 or short of 900? Short of, short of 800, so you know that's a, a relatively small sample, conservative sample. Right. Does that help? Well. Uh, it does. I do have a sample, though. I do have something to show me that uh, what the people are thinking. Okay, and I don't have nothing to show me what uh, the high school or how you put it, they think. I don't know why we don't have a survey of them. Well, some of these the, are high school. Some of these are high school responses, but we think More that the, of them are elementary. Yeah, because of the high attendance rate at the high school or at the elementary level conferences. You know, I think we averaged. 97% or higher attendance for our elementary conferences, there's a greater chance that they took it. One, there was not a survey question to ask them, are you an elementary, a middle school, or a high school parent? That's probably an error on my part. But we have on our patron survey a way for them to tell us whether they're a registered voter, whether they've had kids at the high school. So we don't know what percentage of that was elementary folks, middle school folks, or high school folks. And the high school folks' conferences are set up just a little bit different, if you recall. They do that through advisory classes. So there wasn't as much of a chance to route them to a library or a waiting place or have a computer right there where they could take that survey. Just isn't that much opportunity, you know, as they're coming in. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Uh, well, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> my, my point is, these other items up here are necessary. We need them. Okay. I don't want this state of upgrade to uh, derail the whole project. Yes. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm about. So. Mm -hmm. And that's a concern. But I mean, you know, if you think about any type of survey, the standard deviation when you're putting out there could be three, three to five on each side. So maybe you know it could you could make an assumption, you know, high positive, that it, uh, maybe it should have been somewhere between forty or fifty percent, fifty-two percent. Uh, and and 40 some percent on the oppose on the other side. We've just got to educate folks. We've got to get out. Mm -hmm. The committee's got, we've got a focus on the committee. I need people on that committee that are South High Booster members, sports booster members. Pick your committee wisely and educate folks and educate folks in the committee, or in the community. Uh, and that's what we'll have to do. Um, and as part of the bond issue, we wanted to try and, and reach out and touch get everybody something for this $22 million is the key. When you want to pass a bond issue, you want to put something on it where everyone gets something in a building, uh, whether it be technology, whether it be um, something in painting, whatever it could be. You want to try and appeal to as many of those voters as you can. So, And I have those same fears. But uh, at the same time, uh, I think we won't know until we run it out there. And I would encourage us to get as many Raytown boosters mm -hmm. as we do Raytown South because right. I think they will be just as supportive. Mm -hmm. um, I think that will be very important. Makes you feel any better? I've got the coffee shop guys up at Hy-Vee <laughs> convinced. <laughs> <that we're laughs> <even new stuff. laughs> All right. I do think that that gives us a map or an outline, though, for the items that we need to spend the most time on uh -huh, yeah. and how our informational campaign works and then also that of the committee, of the influential committee. Because see, some of them look at this like a luxury right? item. Yes, sir. And these are investor items. Mm -hmm. Dr. Arlen, do you have a question? Yeah, I think you actually, your point that you need the Raytown high boosters is going to be super critical. Because, I mean, I believe you that we need $9 million at Bay South and only $1 million at Raytown. But people see it very simplistically, and this is a big blue red school district, right? And so I think it's going to be super critical to get the folks at Raytown high on board. That's why one of our co-chairs is a right down yeah. high school parent. Mm -hmm. 
And we're gonna spend a lot of time with the activities directors at both of the high schools, helping them help folks understand what, what it will look like different on scheduling when they have that kind of flexibility and no longer using that for two groups, what kind of creative things that they can do with that. We even think that that's gonna help open that up to the community a little bit for use that we've talked about for so many years because there are just so many events that can't actually be held at South High right now that they have to go to Raytown High to do them, um, you know, because of the size of the stadium, because of the seating, the things that are there. Um, a perfect example is we couldn't have hosted our own soccer, uh, what were we just in, state playoffs at that stadium there, even though it was the South High team, in order to have the amount of seating that we needed for that competition. If we would have become the host school, we would have had to still go to Raytown High, even though Coach Porter plays his regular season games at that stadium. So there are some, some benefits to that. Are your greatest fear the challenge is to overcome two city uh, sales tax extensions in the same ballot? That may be one of our, our, our bigger challenges. Ms. Oscar? Madam President, I'm just, I'm just curious because, and I understand what the uh, Resolution states here in this paragraph, it says if this proposition is approved, it is estimated that the debt service levy of the school district will not increase. It will remain uh, the $1.17 per $100. Then the paragraph below that says, and this could cause a little confusion, the authorization of the bond will authorize a levy and collection of, of an annual tax in addition to the other taxes provided for by law. So it seemingly you could misinterpret that to think that there is going to be an increase, even though you say in the paragraph above that there is no increase. But perhaps uh, people will see that and think that. I, I don't disagree with you at all. Uh, this is constitutional language. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, as much as I would like to say we would like to change it, uh, we can say right here we'd like to change it, but unfortunately. Uh, it has not have that power to do so. I think we had that exact same discussion during the last, I think yes. that paragraph was talked about the last time we did this too. It was. And it's very important, too, so. yeah. <laughs> very important that those who are representing this and pushing this forward make clarity, because that's what we did the last yeah. time. Yes. Uh, we kept telling people, making sure that they understood there was no tax increase. To yeah. If this issue is approved, your debt service levy will be $1.17. If this issue is not approved, your debt service levy will be one dollar and seventeen cents. Right. And we can do that by blending all the all the different bond issues together and make all of the various. And that'll be the job of Brian and I when we talk to the folks and, and educate them. And the committee that um, you know, it's really not. It, it's it's an. You can't say it's a big tax increase because they're going to continue paying taxes. But they explain to them how it works. How we pay down debt. Okay, and we have grown. And assess value, and it's created a window for us. And we've refinanced to bonds. And refinance bonds to get better interest rates, and explain to them how that works. A very simplistic term, you know, it's 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 almost like you're going refinancing your mortgage. I mean, it, it's, it's exactly. that simple, uh, and you get a better rate, so you might have a lesser payment. You know, so that's how we, it'll be our job to make sure folks understand that, and that's what we do. One of the other challenges we face every time that we do this is because we have three municipalities and we have people who don't have kids in our district who live in Independence, for example, they don't necessarily understand that they can vote on this item. Mm -hmm. um, or they live in Kansas City, like I do, and they don't understand that they can vote on Raytown School District items. Um, so getting them to understand and be educated they may live on the north end of the district and don't understand what we care about the south end of the district and doing something with that stadium by helping them to understand how that's going to affect their home prices and all of those types of things with our school district involved. Um, that's the other educational piece. So there's a lot of moving parts here. So, all right, anything else? That's all I have, any questions? Other questions? All right. Before we vote, I just want to declare yes. he had said something about the concepts could change. So when we're voting tonight, we're voting on the we are voting on the ballot the, language. The ballot the ballot language, language and yes, on, on the, the resolution. No, yes. No drawings, no nothing like okay. that. Very good. So we do have a motion before us, um, and that is to adopt the resolution calling for the special election 
on the question of issuance of general obligation bonds. And uh, Ms. Salisbury, I do have a motion from you and a second from Mr. Landers. Any other questions on any of these items that we've seen? Please vote on this. Let me see if I can, if I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call for vote again and see what it does and if it kills everybody then we'll see here. Did it give it to you that time? No, let me see. No, it's not giving me anything. No. Okay. There it is. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, so that was we have the look very good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for coming. Yeah.